those of the advertisers, owners, or management of Pacific Telestations, LLC. For comments, opinions, and questions, please email Jess Lujan at jessthebuzz at gmail.com. The Buzz with Jess Lujan. Good evening, Guam. I'm Jess Lujan. Welcome to this edition of The Buzz. Exciting show tonight. I have the governor of Guam, fresh out of Washington, D.C., and new administration, actually, and a new set of legislatures here in Guam. Good evening, Governor. How are you doing? Oh, good evening, and Merry <laughs> Christmas. Happy holidays to you. Merry Christmas Boy, to you, it's governor. been a few weeks since I've last seen you, boy, but how things have changed, both changed locally uh, and in our federal government as well. Yeah. So, so you had an opportunity to meet with the transition team, especially you met with uh, Governor uh, Pence, oh, mm -hmm. uh, his transition team. So... We have a Republican administration, okay? Uh, you're a Republican, you and, and uh, Governor uh, from um, the Saipan mm. headed up uh, the, the, the Trump movement for, I guess, the, the Asia area. So what does that mean to Guam? I'm, I'm very optimistic with well, that because now we have both houses. Of the, the, well, the good news yeah. was when we looked at the survey that was presented at the Republican Governor's Conference mm -hmm. on the demographics and who voted uh, uh, in this election, mm -hmm. Uh, for uh, President Trump-elect and, and Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. And the last election with Romney versus Obama, mm -hmm. it was clear that in the area of the Asian American Pacific Islander mm -hmm. demographic, mm -hmm. there was a double digit increase and a f swing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, towards President-elect Trump. And mm -hmm. I, again, uh, I wanna thank uh, Governor Torres, but myself and, I, and, and him co-chaired the Asian American Pacific mm -hmm. Island Caucus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, with this, um, with this dynamic movement towards President-elect mm -hmm, Trump. Mm -hmm. We're hopeful uh, that now uh, uh, with his transition and then with his mm -hmm. administration, uh, that we can put forward issues that are very important, very mm -hmm. important for the territories, uh, very important for the Asian Pacific mm -hmm. Islanders, mm -hmm. uh, as well as, most importantly mm -hmm. for, for me, uh, my perspective of the people of Guam but, but, and the Marianas. But, but let, me, let me ask you this, because, you know, we're America, we're America and Asia. <clears throat> Trump is, hey, let's bring jobs back to America and all that. But, you know, um, I, I'm afraid that he, he may be looking at it as a one-size-fits-all kind of situation. And, of course, no. Guam, we, we see the economy of the United States go down. Uh, that doesn't necessarily reflect to Guam. When the Asia economy takes a, a dive, that's when we're di directly mm -hmm. affected. So that being said this h2 situation that we mm -hmm. have here relying on, on foreign workers so how does this mesh in with this this make america great again and we're, this part of the world the territories are relying most, most especially us relying on a lot yeah. of foreign investment and and foreign and foreign workers well first of all in our discussions with vice president-elect uh, mm -hmm. Pe uh mike pence, pence. Mm -hmm. uh it was important to, for me as we started talking mm -hmm. in issues and a lot of them the big issues were areas such Obama, Obamacare and Medicaid. And you can see what's happening in mm -hmm. Guam sure. because we've been treated differently. Sure, sure. Uh, I brought up the fact uh, to the vice president-elect that please, uh, as you start looking at areas concerning the states, the United States, mm -hmm. don't forget the territories mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, like they've done in other issues and whether it's earned income tax credit uh, or uh, Medicaid. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, also look at, at the uniqueness of the territories and other parts mm -hmm, of the United mm -hmm. States as well. I think that's the importance with, with President Trump. What you've seen is now focus back on Main Street, mm -hmm. not Washington mm -hmm. uh, and As Wall Street. Just Wall Street. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the, the issues that are so important to, uh, and whether it's Main Street USA mm -hmm. uh, or Hagatnya mm -hmm. uh, or, uh, or Garapan Saipan, mm -hmm. uh, these are areas that we have to bring up to the point that we got to be treated fairly mm -hmm. and equitably with other states, mm -hmm. but at the same time, looking at what's unique to our particular area. Sure. That's why uh, with uh, the Republican platform, even the issues such as the Jones Act mm -hmm, sure. uh, and cabotage mm -hmm, laws, mm -hmm, hey, um, sure. these are certain things that are, are basically one size fit all, fits all. <laughs> Some of these things yep. have been around laws that are 60 or 70 years. Uh, let's look at what their impacts are, not mm -hmm. only to the United States as a mm -hmm. whole, but the particular communities that are within the United States, and, such and, as and, Guam. And, yeah, and actually, if those are lifted, mm -hmm. Guam can move towards okay, more self-reliance. Exactly. You know? And yeah. I think that's the yeah. important. What yeah. he, uh, as, as 
uh, President Trump mm -hmm. starts focusing on mm -hmm. jobs uh, in America, mm -hmm. it's also about jobs here in mm -hmm. Guam. Now, obviously, we can't mm -hmm. we can't change. Uh, we can't just overnight mm -hmm. find eleven to twelve hundred mm -hmm. skilled plumbers, electricians, sure, sure. Uh, and masons. Mm -hmm. So. They've got to understand too, and President Trump has to understand mm -hmm. how our economy works. Sure, sure. I think our long-term plan, mm -hmm. and this is something I've stated with our folks here in Guam mm -hmm. uh, and, and my directors, is to have a, a homegrown workforce. Mm -hmm. But uh, it'll take time. Yeah. And so in the meantime, this uh, act of the Obama administration, mm -hmm. this unilateral administrative act, mm -hmm. uh, has caused so much damage mm -hmm. to, to our island economy. Yeah. And whether it's our hospital mm -hmm. uh, that now needs cr critical mm -hmm. employees at the new private mm -hmm. hospital, or um, and our construction industry. Sure. So, uh, you know, I'm going to continue to push mm -hmm. with uh, Madeline Berdalio to see what we can do mm -hmm. to, to work things out mm -hmm. congressionally. But this doesn't even have to be handled sure, congressionally. Sure. The H2 issue. This was a unilateral act done by President yeah, Obama, Obama and right. Jay Johnson. So Durant. we're hopeful that they can reverse it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if not, then mm -hmm. in an incoming Trump administration, this is where we're going to state our case. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is damaging. Uh, we understand we, the need for jobs mm -hmm. in the United States. Uh, but if you can't find us uh, mm -hmm. someone from California, Arkansas, mm -hmm. uh, to come over to Guam yeah. to fill these positions, then let us fill mm -hmm. these positions now with uh, H-2 workers, mm -hmm. which we've done for sure, the past 60, sure. 70 years. Sure. And in the meantime, we'll work mm -hmm. towards building our, our local label mm -hmm. first. And I've been doing very well with Gu uh, mm -hmm. The Guam Trades Academy mm -hmm. with GCC, uh, with our with our uh, apprenticeship programs uh, that are in place with Department of Labor, tying in mm -hmm. tied in with the private sector, but it's going to take a lot of time. Sure. Now, now, Gov, how's um, what? I don't think anybody knows this, but mm. I, maybe as a, someone who, who's been there, mm. what is one of his first actions? He says when he goes into office is to uh, repeal the Obama, Obamacare or mm -hmm. replace it. <clears throat> when Obamacare was touted as the, the answer to all, mm -hmm. okay, Guam wanted to be included. Mm -hmm. Then later on we found out it's going to be hundreds of millions mm -hmm. for Guam to be included. So we asked to be re removed from mm -hmm. that. His repeal of that basically uh, wants to give the, the people more choice. Health, yeah, uh, yeah health. Uh, By the uh, way, let's get clarified. Yeah. We are exempt from certain provisions, from certain provisions of, of the Affordable, affordable Health Care Act. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Thank but you. not a lot of mandates, <laughs> but a, sure, yeah, a lot of subsidies. Yeah. yeah. But, but we, the one mandate that we're not covered in is, of course, uh, uh, mandatory insurance for insurance, everybody. Yeah, yeah. But boy, I tell you, a lot of these other areas mm -hmm. in terms of qualifications. Qualifications, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, areas such as pre existing pre -existing conditions, conditions or 20, up to or 26. Up to yeah, 26. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those aren't. Uh, thing, And I'm not, I'm not saying we shouldn't be, mm -hmm. but those aren't things that we have a choice or not. Sure, sure. Now, Unfortunately, we don't get the tax credit. That's right. That's right. Nor do we get uh, uh, any the, the same help and subsidy, mm -hmm. uh, the hundred percent subsidy sure, sure. that that other states get on the Medicaid. Yeah. And you're seeing what's happening now with our private hospitals. That's right. I'm that's giving right. them all accolades for justifying and getting those new rates from CMS. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when you've got this set set uh, figure and dollar uh, amount that is uh, committed to Guam from the mm -hmm. federal government and a 55-45 split. Where we still have to match forty-five. That's right. That's right. Uh, then you're, you're, it's where I have. Uh, I think public health has to make some Solomonic uh, decisions, yeah. cutting mm -hmm. the baby in half, sure, sure. which is just not right. Yeah. When other states are getting hundred percent, that's right. And now, uh, then in the next couple of years, I think they're going to go down to ninety percent subsidy yeah. mm -hmm. from the federal government. So mm -hmm. these are the issues that we need sure. to bring up uh, with the Trump administration, mm -hmm. because obviously, when you look at H one, H two, H two. When you look at uh, the Affordable Her Health, Health Care Act yeah. and Medicaid, mm -hmm. uh, when you look at, at uh, EITC, which go back even longer sure, than the Obama sure. administration, but it sure appears that with the Obama administration, the burdens that the federal government mm -hmm. has placed on us uh, have been so, so, so heavy. Mm -hmm. It's had a major impact not only in our government, but our ability to provide services to our mm -hmm. people of Guam. <clears throat> One of the things he said. I can't wait for a new administration. <laughs> One of the things he said uh, during, the, during, the, during the campaign was he said, if there was a couple there were agencies that were removed, okay, uh, um, Department of Energy, uh, I think it's Energy, okay, yeah. uh, uh, or EPA, right? E EPA. Well, and, and then the other thing was. Oh, well, he's saying was, about removal? Oh, you mean talk, President Trump? Pre President Trump, yeah. Talked about, they've also Remo talked about Department of Edu Education. Well, that, that's what I was going to ask you, Department of Education. Well, what they well, would like to do, <laughs> it, the Republicans are much simpler. You know, they see this big bureaucracy called uh -huh. the U.S. Department of Education, yeah, yeah. and they'd like to just cut it down to size and yeah. just get the money 
and give as much uh, empowerment towards the uh, to the particular states or territories. territories yeah. So focusing more on block grants. Uh, of course, you have some folks like this new incoming. Uh, um, uh, you, uh, and this is a perspective right now. It has to go through the through the advice mm -hmm. and consent process with Congress, but but the one that has been picked, at least what I'm hearing from the media, mm -hmm. for U.S. Department of Education, mm -hmm. uh, this lady was focused on vouchers. Vouchers, yeah. So yep. you know, school choice. So it'll be interesting. Something to you champion in the legislature. <laughs> <laughs> hey, power, power to the people. Power to the people. Yeah. So so it'll be interesting to see how the Trump administration uh, unfolds their education yeah. policy with the, with a Republican Congress. You talk about EPA. Uh, anyone who's had an opportunity to meet with some of the folks like I have mm -hmm. in Region 9 in EPA, uh, when I bring up the fact that they're throwing $1.3 billion to $1.4 billion worth of mandates mm -hmm. uh, in Clean Water and Clean Air uh, Act compliance, and it means close to nine to $10,000 per every man, every, woman, and child, child yeah. Uh, in this island of Guam to pay for him, uh, as I'm sitting down and listening to them, you, you see no sympathy. Uh, so with them, uh, hey, Guam, that's tough luck, yeah. at least with the current yeah. administration. What I'm hopeful for is now with Environmental Protection Agency, there'll be a balance. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll work towards, and we all, you know, people of yeah. Guam want to see cleaner air. We want to see clean water. But then at the same time, you don't want to put us in a position where we either bankrupt a government uh, and or uh, put our people in a position where they can't afford to live in this island. Can't, they can't afford uh, it. Live mm -hmm. in a, maybe they yeah. want us to live in a cave <laughs> yeah, out right. in the jungle. But uh, <clears throat> this is where I'm hopeful with uh, the Trump administration, even when it comes to EPA, mm -hmm. we're okay. going yeah. to have a more balanced approach uh, with the citizenry of, of the territory of Guam. I got to take quick.